Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Fundu Tester. In this, we are going to discuss about the backend automation and we'll try to understand what exactly backend automation is. Usually, people are thinking we are testing APIs and we are testing a database. So, that is not a completely backend automation. There is a much more than this. So, if you are assuming we are working on APIs, then we are just touching backend. We are not basically working on a backend application. So, let's understand in this what exactly backend automation is so i'm going to touch up high level area and then in future videos we are going to discuss more about a backend automation so let's move to the computer screen and let's get started and before moving forward don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe fundu testers camera rolling action <laughs> So moving to computer screen so here after seeing this image what basically you understand so here i am basically i'm making a, some api calls from the server on a server so this is the basically server and this is the database and i'm making some api calls and i'm getting some i'm sending a data and i'm getting a response so this is how basically application works so earlier days there used to be a monolithic architecture there will be a one uh, application deployed, the, all the functionality of application bundled and deployed at one place. But then one guy came, Peter, and they have changed the entire landscape. Everything has been changed. So now we have monolith, we have service oriented architecture, we have microservices and we have serverless architecture. So serverless is basically on a cloud and microservices means we are separating entire product into a small chunks and we are deploying into different different level servers few on a kubernetes few on a dockers and this is how things work so now let's first understand what are the advantages of working on a microservices based architecture so it will be easy to understand develop the test and become more resilient so for example let's say you made a small change and then you need to deploy entire monolith application so again you need to take a backup of a previous version same way you need to take a backup of a previous version of database and you have deployed entire product so it is it will be a time taking process but for example let's say if you're working on a microservice based architecture and you wanted to do the deployment so you are deploying just one component so it will be just a uh, from octopus to aws or from a jenkins ci pipeline you can easily deploy any application so this is a fairly easy compared to the monolith architecture and then deployment independently distributed in nature so for example if you're deploying one component it won't affect any other component yeah you can easily implement ci cd so these all are the basic uh, advantages of a microservices based architecture now what are the components we have so backend we think it's a just a simple server and we are deploying your code but there will be many many things like for example let's say if you're working on a server so it will be a physical servers like on premises we used to have and then now we are moved to the cloud era so we have cloud-based services like aws ec2 on that we are deploying our applications then gcp microsoft azure so we are leveraging cloud infra as a server and apart from operating system so if you have one premises servers, then it will be based on the Ubuntu, Linux or a Windows based server. And web server, we are using Apache, Nginx, application servers, so it will be Node.js, Java EE, Tomcat, Wildify, .NET we have used. And framework, so it depends on the what particular language we have built the framework. So based on that, it will vary. But again, for a testing side, there will be a huge testing area from the database side. So there will be a multiple database like a MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, NoSQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis. So recent, uh, these days many companies are using so Java based infra like it will be like a, a MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis, Redis is based, basically it's for a casing mechanism. Uh, and mongodb so we can query the data we no need to write a huge uh, database query so simply we just like api testing we are passing query parameters similar way we need to write a query and then we'll get a data from the uh, database layer and then uh, scalable solution so we will have a load balancer auto scaling why these things needed because for example let's say we are interacting with a one server to basically one system to the another system 
सो दिस वन सिस्टम विल हैव अ बेनिफिट ऑफ हैंडलिंग थाउजेंड यूजर एट ए टाइम बट अनदर सिस्टम विल हैव अ कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ ओनली हैंडलिंग एट हंड्रेड यूजर्स एंड दैट इज अ इंडिपेंडेंट सर्विस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स ए वी आर मेकिंग ए कॉल ऑन अ पेमेंट गेट वेज और सम अदर थर्ड पार्टी सर्विस एंड दे हैव रिक्वायरमेंट डिफाइन सो वी नीड टू ट्यून आर एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड ऑन देयर क्राइटेरिया सो इन बिटवीन बेसिकली वी कैन प्लेस द लोड बैलेंसर और डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ अ क्यूज वी कैन प्लेस लाइक अ रेबिट एम क्यू एक्टिव एम क्यू इफ यू आर वर्किंग ऑन अ क्लाउड इंफ्रा इंफ्रा देर ऑन ए डब्ल्यू एस वी हैव एस क्यू एस सो दिस थिंग्स कैन बी लेवरेज फॉर लोड बैलेंसिंग एंड स्टफ एंड लेटर ऑन वी हैव अ डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ ऑथेंटिकेशन एंड ऑथोराइजेशन मेकेनिज्म सो इट्स ओथ जे डब्ल्यू टी टोकन so this every area is a backend engineer backend automation engineer is working and touching this area in casing so we have dedicated redis so most of the companies this they using a redis so as a testing part for example let's say we are making some call let's say i'm searching something on a youtube or a flipkart sale is about to come so i'm searching on something on a uh, flipkart and that will be a backend api calls so for example let's say uh for a back end side sorting searching uh, this a uh, operations are very complex operations for example let's say you are just searching one gen so you will feel like it is very easy from a front end guy to or a uh, web application user to search one data but from a back end side they are having a tens of a data for example lakhs of gens product and you are just applying one filter which is a price low to high but back end side it will be a huge uh activities and huge sorting and filtering activities will be there so for that they need to use a, a casing mechanism why because for example let's say i'm the one i'm the first guy who is going to search the gins and then applying a filter so they will store the data into casing memory and whenever for example my friend or my wife is going to search that data then data will picked up from the casing mechanism it instead of going cold to the database so this is how they are building applications to reduce a end user load and improve the performance so for that testing a casing like a redis or meme case is a very very important will this i'll make a dedicated video on a casing what are the things we need to test and what are the basically a, what is the mechanism behind the casing and uh, way of a handling casing so i'll make a separate video on a casing because this is a huge topic and then message queue so for example let's say uh, active mq kafka amazon aws amq so these are the queues basically uh, if you are familiar with her, for example let's say rabbit mq then active mq will be fairly easy just the syntax and everything will change but fundamental it will remain same so but again this is the part of a data structure so we often uh, debating on a social media and on a company why data structure is being asked for automation engineer so this is why if you're working on a complex solution then complex algorithms or complex algo implementation will definitely requires so i'm not uh, emphasizing that we need to learn deep level of graph and greedy problems but at least we should know what data structure and in case we need to leverage any algorithm then we should be able to do that and then now uh, we have config management logging and monitoring elk stack so currently for automation also we are using a elk stack like a uh, elastic search log test and kibana so basically what we are doing is uh, let's say we have a 1000 test in suite and we wanted to run the entire automation suite so on a live dashboard we can see how many tests are passing how many tests are failing instead of uh, looking at the logs and monitoring the things because let's say for example it takes 4 hours to execute so after 4 hours we'll get to know that server is down or browser is keep crashing or some configuration uh, has been missed by some something so instead of waiting for 4 hours we will get to know that if initially or most of the tests are failing then some something has happened and we can fix instead of waiting for a 4 hours so this is a very helpful for automation engineers as well and then version control we know we have git team city git lab bit bucket and then uh, security measures we have multiple ssl tls so here if i'm clicking on a browser so here you can see the connection is secure and if i click on this so it is verified by the amazon and more information so here uh, we will get a certificate so this is being managed by the ssl so this is the ssl certificate 
so here we can see all the information of our aws how it is coming in uh, uh sort and chain pain chain and everything we can see so this is how sls ssl is being implemented so this is the thing from a security perspective so these things also as a test we need to test and now learning it backend is a difficult and tricky compared to the ui automation why it is like that because uh, basically first of all we need the implementation so for example let's say we are working on a ui automation we are learning a ui automation using selenium or some other tool so it will be fairly easy like a flipkart amazon or whatever websites available we can basically automate and we can perform the activities so this way we can grab basic level of a skills but for a back end stuff api is still available on a internet like a free apis we can use we can automate and we can make a api calls using a postman but like a this we discussed the casing mechanism queues and everything so this we will not get a access so if we need to learn then also we need a implementation so if you are getting a chance to work on a back end area then i suggest never miss that opportunity because it's very tricky to learn it requires a implementation and drastic learning curve so again we have discussed so many small small libraries so for every libraries we need to uh, use a sdk or how we can read write and uh, get operations so basically code operations we need to understand for each and everything and then only we can test and we can make a end to end flow the social media buzz is telling uh, it's a ai era ai era but again if someone is being built on a uh, based on the ai then they it is going to deploy it on a cloud or a uh, on premises server so again backend will be always there if you're working on a ai or a legacy technologies so one more very important thing api testing is not a backend testing so api just we are touching with the first layer of a backend but back in there will be n number of layers like we are making a calls then it will go to the third party applications payment gateway banks multiple servers so it's huge infra so we cannot say if i know the api then i am familiar with a back end fundamentals and then another very tricky part is a no tutorial because as i said it requires a implementation so he is a youtuber if i need to make a tutorial on a redis like how i can get a data from the redis or how can i read a kc or how can i send a data on a sqs or any rabbit mq so i need that rabbit mq before making a tutorial i need to implement that i need to write a code for a queues to send a data i need to deploy somewhere and then only from automation i can interact so it is very tricky for a youtubers or a educators who are teaching on a who are making online courses so i would say very limited courses are available and the management view so again now we have a somehow good understanding but earlier the testing automation understanding was like we have to use the ui test we need to make a end to end test and this is how we used to do the automation but now we are slowly moving towards a back end so managers also should have that mindset that if we more focus on a back end test or a unit test maintenance will be less compared to the ui automation because ui we will have a dependency on a browsers browser may crash or elements can be wrong or element cannot wait some element will be stale so due to some and some reason test will fail but here once we have build a concrete test for a back end then there is less chance of failure because there are only there will be data dependencies otherwise there won't be any dependencies and coding knowledge so again backend automation is similar to the development activity so if someone is saying i'm working on a backend automation so they should be that person should be pro in a coding as well because it requires a high level of expertise in a coding we are just not interacting with the element we are playing with huge data to get the automation done and let's discuss couple of the challenges of a backend automation so complexity of a service so whenever we are going to start working on a backend infra we need to start understanding the complexity of a services or complexity of a end to end architecture and then only we can start working on a automation we basically we can make a test based on that and monitoring and logging so it is tricky for example let's say a notification service i am talking about aws sns so 
if i'm sending a data on a sns i will not get to know that whether i have sent a data or not i'll get a some message id but i'll i'll, I'll not get to know that data is actually being sent so for that it requires a listener like a sqs or lambda and then on a cloud watch i can validate the data so every time it is very tricky to identify and monitoring and logging the data and then not enough a test data that is a one more huge point then we have to figuring out what is the entry and exit point for automation so that is tricky because every time it changes like a ui we have just a login and then we can do so and so operation it won't be like that for a backend applications and initial struggle to understand the complexity so entire this entire mind mindset game so for example let's say ui automation we need to think about the user we need to think about uh, blah 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 how they are going to use the application where they will click but for a backend there will be strict boundary huge area so for example let's say from a payment gateway i i am uh, supposed to get x response with three parameters so it will be always three because user is not going to get into payment gateway and send sometime three parameters sometime four parameter there will be a strict boundary strict guideline but need to play with a huge data and uh, need to deal with a huge complexity and another challenge is not getting project so as i said if there won't be implementation then it's a tricky to learn a backend automation so you're very lucky you're able to just to get a work on a backend automation and i would say don't miss that opportunity i hope this video is useful because here i have said my experience you will not get from anywhere else and if you're looking for this kind of a content more then tell me in a comment section if you're looking for a more and don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe fundu tester see you in the next video thank you so much